Hey everyone, this is Steve Lantro with Collider. I'm here in the South by Southwest, in our South by Southwest studio with the uh, freaky minds behind Y2K. Uh, yeah, said <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking with you, Steve. Right. So, one, listen, I have not, you guys know that the, the, the world premiere is tonight at the Paramount Theater. I haven't seen it yet. I've done a lot of research. I know a lot about it, but uh, almost everyone watching this interview won't have seen it yet. So, how have you been describing it to friends and family? Uh, we pretty much, in terms of like the premise of the movie, is that what you're getting yeah. at? Um, it's about uh, two loser dudes in high school who uh you just clo- just pan over to them right. yeah, loser, loser. Two, not three, two. guys you know <laughs> you know that they're characters right <laughs> they go to the big uh the big party on um new year's new year's eve 1999 and uh at midnight uh things go um a little differently than you might expect. <laughs> you guys are gonna to want to check it out. <laughs> and they're out. That was the sales pitch. So, so I don't know if I'm, if, if I, how much have you actually been saying more about like what actually happens after midnight, or are you keeping that I, on the I, down? I, I, have, I have you. I've not been. Have you? Were you saying to friends or in in public? I'm saying like on camera during yeah, the interviews. Yeah, no, we try to avoid it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so things just go wrong. Yeah. 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 Well, not necessarily. <laughs> Things go in a different direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it's accurate. robots. It's robots. <laughs> so, well, I'm gonna, hilarious bit. We've been doing this all day. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm going to ask the three of you guys, um, without I guess without spoilers, um, what was it like reading this script? Because it must have been because like without without getting into things shit happens once midnight hits and i'm curious what it was like reading on the page and what excited you about being part of this oh gosh i don't like being first um that being said no (laughs) i uh it was so fun to read because i really like when uh um, things go a little differently than you expect, but it's it's so fun to read stuff like that on the page and then see it kind of come to life on a screen, both while you're filming it and then when you see the finished product. Um, that you really think it's this like very like coming of age. These two kids are gonna own New Year's, and then midnight strikes and things go a little differently than you think they're gonna go. Yeah, oh, you got coined a phrase. I think here. we're gonna make T-shirts, but. I, it was really fun to read, and I, it was so different than anything I had read before, and certainly different than anything I had ever done before, so it was just like an immediate yes. Your turn. <laughs> you go. Um, man, I was, uh, was a little upset that my character was such a, such a damn nerd, such a loser. Can we actually um, just do a time And has no time confidence. Can we sidebar? <laughs> and apparently, oh, I'm, so the, I'm, the right guy. In the I'm the right guy for the job, apparently. <laughs> that's, that's cool. That's cool. Um, but, you know, he, uh, he, 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 he learns a thing or two due to the end of the world um, and makes some friends along the way. And it's, it's got a lot of heart. It's a lot of fun. I wasn't sure how they're gonna. Why are you give me the? Why are you give me a dirty look? It does it does have a lot of heart? I think. Um, but yeah, I, I I thought that all of the I thought the characters were were brilliant. I thought that it's hard to you know in a lot of high school movies there 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 are often the cliques the um, you know the nerds the jocks and the, but this was hyper specific for the time mm. and each group was so damn interesting and 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 um very fleshed out uh and yeah just i was drawn to the characters and and yeah a beautiful script i just want to say carla Niven, it's beautiful i actually loved playing um my character and stuff and I, I didn't have any feelings towards you guys or the script or anything so i just want to say thanks that, man. i loved it and honestly yeah i just <clears throat> yeah i just really appreciate you guys appreciate um you guys no it was fun um <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know. I just, I, I like the script and the character that I play, and I just like how he. Um, I love the friendship between um, Danny and Eli, who are in the film, and kind of you're kind of not. It's not like you're you're like introduced to them, but it's like 
you get in the movie and it's like oh you know in the first few minutes of the movie you're like okay now i'm just watching friends who have been friends for a long time and it's almost like you're in the room with them and they're talking about like girls boobs and like <laughs> it's just like they're playing video games and then you kind of go on this journey with them and then shit happens after 12 o'clock and then you're like, <laughs> you're like oh, yeah, well, yeah. um so yeah it was yeah but yeah i just want to say i appreciate you two guys and <laughs> what you guys did and, we appreciate yeah, yeah all of you I just want to point out that we can't talk about too much, but Weta Workshop worked on this movie. That should give you an indication of things that happen, perhaps. Yeah, yeah there's so much. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, there's a lot of there's some practical effects in there and practical builds, and um, Weta had a, a large part to do to do with that. And um, so, yeah, for all you. Weta folks, get ready for what you're about to see. I want to be actually serious. This is your first, <laughs> this is, no, 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 but like, look, I really want to ask, because it's your first yeah. time, I'm a fan of your work, this is your first time directing, and I'm curious, so you show, you, the film's done, you have a, an edit you're happy with. Who do you show it to for honest feedback, and what were, what's like the big, what was the best note you got from someone that made you look at the film in a completely different way and say, oh, maybe I need to fix this, or adjust this? It's a load of, I mean, Evan and I, you know, saw this through from moment one when I texted him essentially the premise of the movie and we wrote it together and produced it and saw the edit through together. Um, and I'm trying to think, I, I don't know if anyone jumps to your mind. Um, I do trust my wife is somebody I always show like her, her Kate uh, Lynn Scheel, who's a very talented artist in her own right. Um, but so I, anything I'm working on, once it gets to a certain point where I'm like proud enough of it and I feel like this is pretty close to what it's going to be, um, I'll look to her and, uh, and she'll always have some pretty wonderful advice. I'm trying, I don't know like what specifically she, she said, but whatever it was, it changed the movie and I really love you, baby. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I also think Kate is great. She's a wonderful person. Uh, I, I think in this process, what was really nice is that, you know, since Kyle and I did this kind of together the, the whole way, that, like, we always did have each other to, to kind of lean on and, and check certain things. Like, there were things that we were always in full agreement on. There were things that, like, one of us was very passionate about, and we could trust the other to be like, okay, if you know that this is the move let's do it and then there were like rare instances where we didn't agree and we both had like different ideas of what it should be and figuring that out was so instrumental in like getting to the the finished product because we were able to like really talk out why we felt the way that we did and so it was nice to have like a real in-house i was to say like uh, there were this thing got noted hard i feel like we were constantly getting notes so the movie was <laughs> shifting um and i mean those notes made us have to like justify and figure out why we felt so strongly right. about mm -hmm. certain things but it but it all i mean it it came together it comes together that's that's truly the awesome thing about the experience is like i think the movie that we have i do genuinely believe it's the perfect version of it so anyone who had a, a piece of uh, advice or, or thought um was meaningful and helpful. So I'm going to be doing a super cut of this one question that for everyone that's coming in and uh, I'm going to ask it of you guys and we'll see what the answers are. If you could only watch one TV show for the rest of your life, what TV show would you watch and why? Don't start with me. Why you started the scene? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> there's a spin-off show in New Zealand uh, of what we do in the shadows and it's called Wellington Paranormal and it's based in the city that I grew up in and if you know what what we do in the shadows if you've seen the original yeah. film the two cops in it, it it's basically like a, a cop show about Stop. them and it's like <laughs> them going around and like investigating things so yeah that show what I would watch Wellington Paranormal watch that I've seen Gilmore Girls an embarrassing amount of times that I don't get sick of it but I think my real answer would be Arrested Development I find something new to giggle at by David Cross every single time I watch that show. You? So, you have a thought? It's so tough. One it um, is tough. For the rest of your life. It seems for the rest like um it seems like comedy should should be the right answer. I feel like um it's got endless seasons and whatnot. I I would say it's always sunny in Philadelphia, but nice. but I think I'll say Atlanta is 
probably yeah, I think good maybe the best show that's ever been made. Um, and you got both. You got comedy. You got inspiration, drama, yeah. and great filmmaking. True. <laughs> and fucking great filmmaking. I'll go Peep Show. Wow. I think the funniest show I've ever seen, mm-hmm. in a lot of seasons. Kyle's gonna go with How It's Made. <laughs> <laughs> Cash <Okay>. Cab. <laughs> Keep going, man. <laughs> uh, no, but I do really like how, how it's made. And uh, <laughs> it's just interesting to find out how things are made. So. <laughs> I, like how, I like how they knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Is this like something that came up on set a lot where this was? No, I don't think we were ever talking about how No, I was going to say, yeah. Uh, the TV show I was going to say, which I, I, I sort of challenge anyone who's who sees this if they've seen it or can seek it out because I've not been able to find it since but I would love to watch it over and over again was a show called Most Talented Kids that was on yes. um, yeah. I think ABC Family maybe circa 2006 uh, at one point Daryl Sabara was a judge um, but Bobby J. Thompson was one of the judges do you guys know who Bobby J. Thompson is? very f- funny young man who at the time was probably like eight years old, but um, kind of spoke like a, like a full grown, maybe like, I wish you'd pulled Tyra Banks out of that hat to like a kid magician or something like that. But yeah, that show, I wouldn't want to watch again. I see one know what's a chow show. Uh, see, the, this is the reason why I like this question because I've been hearing the craziest effing answers yeah. from different people. Uh, before I run out of time, I, I do want to ask you an individual question if you don't mind. I am so looking forward to the live action How to Train Your Dragon. Oh. And so what what is it like? I know you've been filming. So what has it been like and what can you tease people about it? Um, can't tell you anything or I'll die. So um, no, but it's, it's great. I think there's a lot of, uh, we're making something that like people love like really love I love them growing up as a kid and already there's been a lot of stuff you know when the casting comes out and there's different opinions and there's different people and people love the show like it's and and they want to make sure it's great or they love the film so it's really great and um Dean who's the director from all the film like they're doing a good job they're making sure it's done well there's a lot of heart there's a lot of feeling and there's been a lot of conversations on set where they're like, do we do this? And people have said no, because the audience won't like it and they've changed it and they've done it. So they're really staying true to what it is. So I'm excited to see it. Yeah, it's great. It's fine. When do you actually wrap filming? I, I wrap in about two months. I think we wrap in like May. So we've been going for quite a long time. So they're taking their time to make sure it's done well. So yeah, it's exciting. A lot of practical sets. So it's not like we're standing in front of a blue screen. Like we're there in these big buildings. They've built the arena, like an actual site. Like they've, they've done they've done their job probably. I can't express to you how excited I am. And mostly because it's Dean doing it. Yes. You know, yeah, yeah. it's like they're, you know what I mean? He's the guy. He created his baby. Whole, it's yeah, his child. Yeah. hundred percent. I have to ask you a question. I have a funny feeling. I'm really going to like this movie. <laughs> I, I, I mean, cause I, I have a real funny feel. I have a good feeling about it. Are you looking at other, are you guys developing other scripts? Are you thinking about directing again? How much did you enjoy the process? I mean, the process was, was wonderful, large in part by, you know, by these, by these people and like truly having, um, an awesome set where like, I think everything we envisioned came to fruition. So like, uh, would certainly do a version of it again. Um, and yeah, I, I, Definitely working on stuff. Yeah, it's always sort of, I don't know, being. Um, Want to keep them guessing. Yeah, I guess I was something about like the process of how uh, ideas like, uh, yeah, I'm working on stuff. <laughs> yeah. I really have so many specific questions that I yeah, want to yeah. ask, but it's going to have we'll to be. Back. Let's do it af- after. Yeah, after, yeah, yeah. I, after I've seen the movie. And actually, one last thing, and I could be wrong, and I apologize if I am. Are, were you a part of Paddington 3 or am I wrong on this? Um, I, I was a part of Paddington 3, but I'm not anymore because of the SAG strike. Um, they were oh, able to continue filming, but I was the only SAG actor. Another talented actress is doing it. And I'm very excited to see because it was a wonderful script. And I think Paddington fans are going to be very thrilled. I think the first two films are both masterpieces. Yes, they're I think wonderful. They're amazing. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling you're going to land on your feet. You'll book something else. <laughs> Here's hoping. You know. Um, so listen, I, I mean it sincerely. You're. I, I can't wait to see the movie tonight. And do you know how I know the movie is good? And I'll say it on camera because I've been to a lot of film festivals. And the Saturday night 
of the opening weekend, whatever they book at seven o'clock and 10 o'clock, the festival knows what they have and they, they know about what they should schedule. And you're the 10 o'clock movie on a Saturday night, which means they think your movie is awesome because, and that's how I know the movie is so good because they gave you that time slot. That's so very sweet. Well, yeah, we're psyched for you to see it. We're psyched for everyone to see it. We're, we really are proud of, 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 of it. I cannot wait. On that note, uh, have a great fest, and I look forward to seeing it. Thank you so so much much for everything.